Can a body fat scale really tell you your body fat percentage? Hey everyone, this episode's a little bit technical, but I think you'll find it useful if you have a weight scale and you're trying to figure out how much can I actually rely on this. So if you've noticed, I've talked about my goals, my goals for my weight, uh, but I really haven't talked a whole lot about body fat percentage other than to say, I'm overweight, right? And I wanna lose some here, 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 everywhere. Can you really rely on your scale and can you use that as a form of measurement, not just for your weight, but also for your body fat. So I use a Wythings digital scale that also will measure your body fat percentage along a list of other measurements. I really like the scale, but I know every single time that that body fat percentage is not something that I would take with me and say, this is my body fat, because it's all over the map. It's, it's two or three points of variance every single day. And while your weight can and does fluctuate several pounds a day, depending on how much food you have, your body fat is more or less stable. You know, what has changed is your weight, your hydration level, et cetera. So can you rely on that number? Let's start off by talking about weight. How does a scale that you step on produce for you an accurate weight, you know, with an electronic signal? What's happening if you flip your scale over, it has four pegs. Those four pegs evenly distribute the load of your weight. You, you'll notice that if you stand too far forward on your scale or too far backwards, it'll throw your weight off. Your most accurate readings come when you're centering your weight on the scale. Those four little pegs on the bottom, then take that pressure and apply it to something called a load transducer. A load transducer sends an analog signal through it, but when weight is applied to it, that load transducer bends just ever so slightly and it changes the strength or the speed of that signal. That is then interpreted by a computer chip and it spits out a digital reading. Now, your digital weight scales are both accurate and precise. It's actually shocking how good they, they are. A scale that's also offering a body fat percentage calculation or readout is doing something different. It's sending, it's actually turning your body into the circuit. It's sending a small electrical signal through part of your body, either your hands, if you're using a handheld unit, for us, most of us, it'll be our feet as we're standing on our scale. It sends an electrical signal through one foot or the other, it goes through your body and it comes back the other side. And what it's measuring is the speed at which that signal goes through the body, and here's why. Our body is comprised of muscle, bone, fat, and water. And water is a very good transmitter for electricity. And so when it sends this signal through your body, what it's measuring is the relative speed of that signal. So Muscle, in particular, is actually made up of 70% or so water. Fat is only made up of maybe 15 to 20% water. So when the signal goes through a body that is mostly muscle, it'll go through that body much faster to the other side, much faster than another individual of a similar build that is primarily fat. The fat with less water in it slows that signal down. But here's the thing, your water content at any given point in time can change dramatically. So you could hop on a scale before breakfast and say, okay, hey, I'm 20% body fat. You could drink a liter of water or you could go work out. You could hop back on the scale and maybe your body fat percentage is higher or lower depending on what happened to your water concentration. And the scale has no way to compensate for that. In contrast, when you drink water, your weight actually does increase. So when you drink water and the scale produces a higher value, that's accurate, right? That's precise and accurate. It's a properly accounting for the variance of water. You drink water, you weigh more. But your body fat percentage, your actual body fat percentage doesn't change when you drink a liter of water. Just your body's ability to resist that signal or transmit that signal has varied and that changes the calculation. And just as a, as a fun note, this is probably one of the better examples I can think of of accuracy versus precision. Accuracy is the closeness of an expected value to a known value, a standard. Precision has nothing to do with whether or not it was close to the known value, but whether or not it reliably produces that same result over and over again. So with the weight scale, it's both accurate and precise. Imagine the bullseye, we're hitting the bullseye every time. With body fat percentage, it might be accurate, assuming that you can control all the variables, but because you can't, it's rarely precise. It struggles with both accuracy and precision. And it's not its fault, it's just the way that it's actually measured. So, does that mean that we just shouldn't use it, we should ignore it? No, I actually find it very useful, but you have to recognize its limitations and how you use it. Let me give you an example of how I would use my body fat percentage. When I step on the scale, let's use my example right now. So let's say that I am a 185 pound male. I step on the scale in the morning, I'm 25% body fat. I step on the scale in the evening, I'm 27% body fat. And I'm trying to figure out 
What does that mean? Which one am I? Have I have I gotten fattier as the day progressed? No. The likely reality is that you're somewhere in between those two. We don't know which one of those is more accurate, but what it's providing for us is a range. And this is why it's useful. Based on those two pieces of information there, we know our actual weight is 185 pounds, and we suspect that our body fat is in between 25 to 27%. So that will quickly tell us what is our lean mass. Now our scale might tell us this as well. Some of them will actually spit out those additional values for you, but this is very easy math to do. Just take your actual body weight, 185 pounds, and multiply it times either side of the range, 25% or 27%. So the math would look on your calculator would look like 185 pounds times 0.25, and then another calculation, 185 pounds times 0.27. That calculation would produce a range of 46 to 50 pounds, telling us that our body, my body right now, has 46 to 50 pounds of fat. Now, what does that mean? First of all, let's say what it does not mean. It does not mean that I can lose 46 to 50 pounds. Your body needs fat. Fat is a critical piece of your body. If you were to get to 0% body fat, you're all lean mass, you would die. Just like that. You cannot survive without some amount of body fat. Having said that though, we now have a way to calculate a target goal for ourselves. What is your goal? What body fat percentage would you like to be? You know, a normal healthy adult, especially a male, I think women typically add two to three additional points on top of this, but a male that's healthy would be right around maybe 15% body fat. That aspirational goal for men is what would it look like for me to get to 10% body fat? So let's use 10% for this example. So if I'm, in, if I'm right now somewhere between 25 to 27%, I could subtract 10% off of that and say, okay, I need to lose somewhere in between 25 minus 10 or 27 minus 10, right? So 50, I need to lose 15 to 17% of my current body weight. Calculation is the same now. We have a new range that we're gonna set up. So you could take 185 pounds, your weight right now, multiply that times 15% or 0.15, and then also parallel to that, 185 pounds times 0.17 or 17%. So in this case, that would produce a range of 27 to 31 pounds. If we had a goal of getting to 10% body fat, we would expect to be able to do that from right now, from where I am right now, I would need to lose an additional 27 to 31 pounds. So assuming that we could hold on to all the muscle that we have right now, that we're not going to gain additional muscle, that we're only going to lose body fat, like you can see there's several assumptions there, our target weight to get to a 10% body fat would be to land somewhere in between 154 pounds and 158 pounds. If we're gonna say, wow, 10% sounds awesome, but a little bit extreme, I'm really just going for like a healthy 15% that I could maintain in the long term, then we could say, okay, using those same assumptions, we would expect that we could get somewhere in between 163 pounds and 166 pounds. So that gives us a very nice range for ourselves. Somewhere between a 10% to 15% body fat goal, we will want to shoot for somewhere in between 154 pounds on the most strict side to 166 pounds. You see how this works and how you could tailor this towards your needs or your goals? You don't need it to be perfectly precise all the time. But by incorporating this type of range, we can discard this kind of shoddy all over the map body fat, but use that to quickly grab the numbers we need to give ourselves an appropriate range for myself. So that's how I came up with the goal. I'm gonna try to get down to 165 pounds. I'll see where I'm at from there. And this will actually be interesting. We can use my personal experiment to calibrate the scale. If I can get down to 165 pounds, we would expect that I would slide just under 15% body fat. If I can get down to in the upper 150, so 155 to 160, we would expect that I would be flirting with that 10% body fat percentage point. And this is why I love having a body fat percentage and also simultaneously this is why I don't throw my body fat percentage up on the screen when I'm doing the time lapse for my weight loss because just it's, it's meaningless as a day by day measurement, but it's a good framework building calibration, framework building point as you're setting up your personal goals. If you wanna check out the Wyving Scale that I use each and every day, check out the link in the description below. If you're following on my journey, just right here, I'm putting a card. This is for the playlist for this series. This is actually the sixth video in the series, and I'm tracking my journey. Originally, when I, when I started, I was thinking this will be maybe a 30-pound weight loss transformation. The more I lean into this and the more room I see for improvement, we might actually end up losing somewhere between 35 to 40 pounds by the time this is all done. Right now, I think this week, actually, I'm gonna weigh in at having lost 15 pounds. So this is a big deal. Let's go see if I hit my weight loss goals for this week.
think lighter thoughts. <laughs> All right, and we're back. You saw the weight, right? We, we didn't quite hit our goal. So our goal was to hit 186.5 pounds. That's what we were shooting for. We ended up coming in at 187.4. So we missed our goal, but we did still lose 1.2 pounds this week. I'm not super depressed at that. This was a great week. I think maybe I, I, I gained some muscle. Maybe my body just needed that extra week to break through a plateau. 1.2 pounds, though, that's a success. So we don't get disappointed. Still below the trend line. Everything's still moving the right way. I'm encouraged. What do I want to do for next week? I'm going to set the goal again. I'm going to give myself one more week at, at trying to shoot for two pounds. So in this case, I am 187.4. My goal for next week will be 185.5. 185.5 is going to be the goal for next week. That's the official goal. Now let's tie this back into body fat, right? How did the, you saw the body fat percentage on the scale a second ago? How did this scale perform? The scale reported to me a body fat percentage somewhere, and I've actually hopped over the scale a couple times today. The, the body fat percentage varied anywhere from 26% up to 26.9%. It's kind of a big range, just as much as 1% body fat. What's cool about that though is I could compare this to this exact same time and day last week. The body fat percentage was floating somewhere between 27 to 27.7%. So although still a big range there, there's a net 1% difference over the last week or two. And if we go even bigger picture, like let's look at the arc total. When we started, we were I was 200 pounds, 202 pounds at the high, and I was hopping on the scale and the body fat percentage was giving me a range in between 29.4 and 29.7% body fat. So we've, we've lost over 3% body fat so far. And while I don't trust any one single number with these body fat measurements, it's way easier than doing calipers or DEXA or bod pods. You can do it at home. And while, I, again, I don't trust a single measurement, I can look at that trend and say, okay, this is working. These numbers are to some varying degree reliable. I can trust the trend. And a few caveats here. If you get a number that is absurdly outside the range of all of your other numbers, for instance, I'm weighing in at 26% body fat or 25% body fat, and then suddenly tomorrow or next week, I get a 14% body fat number. You got to throw that number out. That was a bad read. Something went wrong. That isn't right come back and try it again later. But if you're tracking it day by day, you can put some faith in these numbers and use, I think you can use, you can use your Wyvings body fat scale or your alternative to track your body fat. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Now I realize some of you are watching this because you're following me on this weight loss journey. Other people are just watching this because they were looking for a good YouTube video on how to figure out whether or not their body fat scale actually worked. So either way, I hope you got value. Make sure you go to the first episode and start this playlist from there. You can actually follow me on this journey, short five to 15 minute videos week by week as I go from 30, basically 30% 30 body fat down to 10% body fat. We're 15 pounds down so far and we're gonna keep going from here. By the end of this thing, I think we'll probably end up losing somewhere between 35 to 40 pounds. If this video is valuable, if it's what you are looking for, hit that like button, press subscribe, and we'll see you next time.